this is my passion. This is Ike's Outdoors. Hey guys, Ike here from Ike'sOutdoors.com. Today in this video I want to talk to you some of the tips, uh, or give you some of the tips and tricks that I use during the rut. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do to, to, to fool a buck, to make him come over to you, and I'm just going to show you some of the things that I've tried in the past and I've had pretty good luck doing. Um, this buck right here, if you guys can see him on the film, uh, I called to this buck for about two hours. He came in, hit a bedding area, and laid down with a doe, and I could see him out there. And I would do a little bit of calling, and he would come in. And you can watch the video on this. Um, I will put the, the name of the video right down here. You can search it. It's on our channel. It's an older one. But uh, we, I sit there and watched him for two hours, and he'd perk up and look, but he was with a doe. And then what happened, it was just luck. Two other bucks came in and, and disrupted him, and he actually got up. The doe got up as well, and the doe took off, and he lost her. And I started calling to him, and I'd been calling for a while. And when I started calling to him, him and those two other bucks came right over to me. And I got lucky. I got a shot on him and was able to, to harvest a pretty nice uh, buck. So uh, that consistent calling to him, as soon as he lost that doe, he, he, he came right to me thinking that I was the doe that he'd lost. So calling and scents and stuff like that do work, and I've had pretty good success using them in the past. So first thing we're going to talk about is... Uh, scents and then we'll get into some calling and some tricks like that on the on the calling. I use a variety of scents. Um, I've got several of them here. I like to use on myself. I don't use any estrus uh, scent. I'll use uh, deer doe urine and I'll, I really like to use this white tail herd from uh, Trophy Blends and I can take this stuff. This is a really good product. It lasts forever. It's like a deodorant stick and I can just rub this stuff all over me um, and it basically makes me smell like a whitetail bedding area is what it makes me smell like and hopefully it won't make, make a big buck want to mount me so I can put that all over me I put it on my pants on my boots uh, pretty much just all over on my legs my, my back everywhere I can get it uh, and that's just a nice calming scent same way with this serenity uh, this serenity is a liquid uh, it's made by hard on the trails and it's just a, a whitetail bedding area is what the smell so I use those for a calming scent and to make me smell like a deer to cover me up um, I also have I like to use a natural doe urine as a spray uh, same way I'll spray this on my boots and I like the spray form because as I'm going in I can just simply stop and spray and I can find branches spray branches and stuff like that and then when I'm in the stand I'll actually sit there and and give this a good shake but I'll actually sit in the stand and pump that stuff every now and then one it helps me check the wind and it ain't moving in here that's for sure but uh, it helps me check the wind make sure the winds aren't shifting but it also takes a little bit of scent downwind of me and I don't know if it's gonna be effective or not but it gets a little bit of scent downwind of me so those are my my calming uh, my blend in type of scents that I use is doe urine and these two the the bedding area I picked up the wrong one uh, these two that smell like a bedding area so it makes me smell like a whitetail especially this makes me smell like a doe so I really like to use those pre-rut uh, basically I'll use those all year round but pre-rut I really start pouring them on and using them quite a bit um, the other things that I use is estrus um, whitetail blends or um, trophy blends has a nice estrus stick smells really good same way I got this is just a hunter specialty same way as that other one uh, primetime scents and lures premium doe estrus plus and um, these are ones that I will not put on myself what I like to do is put these on uh, these little wicks right here nice thing about them uh, I can rub this trophy blends on there you can see where I've been rubbing it on there and it'll give it a good smell I can spray this use the spray spray it on there and I like to keep mine in a nice little bag like this and the reason I can do that is I can peel off a little bit of this and drop it down in the bag and I can also take some of this this uh, uh, dough and estrus and actually just spray that down in the bag like that, seal it up, and let that marinate nice and good. So I like both forms. I like the solid uh, and the liquid. The solid really stays on these uh, on these wicks pretty good, and I really like that aspect of it. And the liquid, I can take this, and when I get to a scrape or something like that, I'll show you where the arrow comes in in just a second. Um, I get to a scrape or 
uh, a, a rub or something like that. I can spray the, the scrape. I can spray around it. I can also spray around that area and uh, I can I can lay down a nice scent with the spray. So the main reason, main thing I use this for is to put on trees. I'll put this right on the rub, right on the branch where he's licking above it, and I'll put this right on this wick as well. Uh, and how I use this wick, I also use this wick as a drag. I'll take one of these wicks. I got an old arrow. I'll just put this arrow in my quiver. I got an extra spot, and uh, preferably one with veins on it because this thing's not going to stay. And when I walk in, I don't walk on the trail. I'll take one of these wicks out of this bag that's got doe urine on it, got that uh, doe and estrus on it, and then when I get it out, of course I have gloves on, deal with these things with your gloves on, I'll take this doe urine and I'll rub it on there real good and I'll take some of that spray, spray it on there real good and get that thing good and doctored up. And then when I walk, I'll actually walk beside the trail and I can just drop this down to my side and I can rub it on everything like that. And when I get to an area that I want to rub something, say this camera stand was a branch, I could actually just reach out there, rub that wick all around on the camera or on the, the, the spot where I want to rub it on and not actually get close and have to touch it. So I use an arrow for that. And I see a lot of people use, uh, use uh, string, rope, stuff like that. I like the arrow because it's a little bit stiffer because I can actually take it and put it somewhere that I want it and rub it all around. And I can take a good dose of this stuff right here and actually just coat that thing with it. And then I can take it rub it down and rub it right where I want it so without getting close putting my hands on it and stuff like that getting my boots over there and, and laying sent down so it's just maybe it's just a paranoia in me but I like to, to do that so that's what I use as far as scents and and uh, stuff like that and I'll start using I won't start using the the doe and estrus scent until about this time of year it's about early November right now uh, end, of no, end of October first of November I'll really start using the doe and estrus stuff at that point and beginning or end of October I, I don't go with it too heavy I stay pretty light when I start seeing bucks chasing like I've been seeing the last couple of days that's when I'll really start pouring it on and really start using it okay so the next thing I want to talk about is calling um, early in the year get some of this stuff out of the way here early in the year I don't do a lot of calling just a, a, some grunts every now and then calling is is it's never a bad thing to call. You can call too much, I think, but it's never a bad thing to call. So early in the year, um, I'll do a little bit of calling. I'll do a little bit of grunt, just a basic buck grunt or a basic doe grunt. Uh, especially if I see a doe without a fawn, then I'll hit a, a fawn grunt, try to get her over to me, uh, stuff like that. But when it comes into closer to the rut, that's when I'll really start start hitting the doe and estrus and stuff like that. Uh, the calls I like to use... Um, I've got this one here, and don't ask me what this is. I have no idea. Uh, this grunt was used by my dad, uh, and my dad's been dead for 13, 14 years. So, um, and I've used it ever since he, he passed away. Uh, this thing's probably 20 years old, I would say, at probably a pretty good estimate. And I really like it. It's just a nice, good uh, butt grunt, not a roar, like a lot of these ones you see on the, on the shelf today. And I like that because it's not overly aggressive. And around here, our bucks, you know, we have some mature bucks, but the population of mature bucks isn't too great. So I don't use the buck roar and some of those really aggressive ones. I like this one here. This is the, the HS, uh, this is a true talker. And if you don't push it down, he gets a pretty good growl to it. And if I do that to one of my deer around here, he's probably going to run off. So I like to keep it more in, in a tone like this one. It's a little less aggressive, and this one has got, I can, and this is my favorite call, this one here. So, when it when I see a buck, and I see him cruising, I see him rubbing, stuff like that, late October, um, that's when I'll start doing a little bit of grunting toward him. And I try to keep it kind of passive and kind of, I want him to think he can come over and win this fight. I don't want to roar at him and, and challenge him. Uh, necessarily I want him to think he's got a chance of coming over and whooping me so uh, that's worked really well for me so I keep it kind of light and, and not real aggressive uh, and that's what I use these two calls for um, now this HS uh, this uh, call by Hunter Specialty this is the um, I just said it I can't remember true talker and I like the true talker because it's got 
an open reed. It's just covered with this with this rubber coating here. It doesn't have a, a collapsible tube like this one, but it doesn't seem it doesn't bother me a bit. I really like the sound it makes, and I can go from a butt grunt right to a doe call without ever taking this thing out of my mouth and having to run two or three calls. <laughs> So I can do those two things um, back to back without having to swap calls and try to do different stuff like that. So um, those are the calls I use. I also have a hands-free call and it doesn't sound real great but when you get one in close this thing works pretty good. I, I don't like the sound of it but it seems to work just to lure one in. And when I use this one I'll simply put it in my mouth and give it a really really light call. This one is you don't want the buck to pick you out this is when you got a buck right there underneath you and you just got to get him to take a step or come in, you know, two, three more yards to get you a shot. And I like it because it's got a soft read on it. I slobber all over it. Uh, it's got a, a soft deal here, soft kind of diaphragm. So I can put it in my mouth and I can change tone just by putting a little bit of pressure on it. So when I get a buck in close and I think I'm going to get a shot, I have this one around my neck all the time. And when I think I've got a buck getting in, I just put that thing in my mouth just like that. And if I need to use it, I can use it. And if I don't need to use it, no big deal. It doesn't come in contact with my bow. I can shoot with it in my mouth. No big deal uh, having it in there. So. Not a great call, but really works to get them that couple extra steps and stuff like that. So let's talk about a couple different kinds of calls that I use. Uh, oh, the other one I got here. I also use a Primo's can. I like this can. It's just a real small uh, doe and estrus bleed. Works pretty good. But I'll use that one in conjunction with a buck grunt. I'll use this one by itself for a while. And then slowly I'll start adding some buck grunts to it. I want a, a buck out there to hear this and think there's a doe and estrus over there. And if he won't come to that, then I'll start throwing in some grunts and make him think that there's a buck over there that's trying to breed that doe, his doe. So maybe that'll lure him in. So I'll hit that a little bit. And then I'll throw in some light grunts. And then, you know, kind of mix it up. And I'm doing, uh, this is basically my sequence. I'll do this a couple times. Do some light grunts and I'll wait 10 minutes and do it again and then I'll wait 10 minutes and then the next time I do it I may just do the ecto and estrus or I may just do the grunt so you just got to kind of mix it up until you until you find something that works and piques that buck's curiosity to get him in so that's a doe and estrus right there another thing that you can do is when a buck is uh, chasing a doe he'll do I call it buck I call it clicking I don't know what, what exactly it's called but you guys have seen bucks chasing does around and know what I'm talking about. He'll get that stiff-legged walk and he'll start going. <coughs> With every step he takes, he's grunting. I mean, just like every time his feet hit the ground, he's grunting. And usually they got their head down and they're, they're just really chasing after their does. So I'll do an estrus, a doe and estrus, and then I'll get that buck clicking going too. <coughs> So something like that, and that seems to work pretty good. I've had some pretty good luck calling bucks in with the, with it like that. A couple weeks ago, I had one um, just come running in as hard as he could come, looking for that buck that was trying to breed his doe. So that's the calls that I use there. Uh, the rattling uh, rattling works fairly good around here. It's not as good as some other places like down in Texas or something like that where there's a lot of bucks, but rattling does work all right around here. Kind of piques their curiosity. Um, I, I got a set of rattling horns. This is from a buck uh, that I killed uh, a long time ago. So I just got a good set of rattling horns. And I see guys on TV doing this. And I've never seen bucks in real life do that. I've seen bucks fight. And I've never seen bucks in real life. At least not in this area. So I've seen some guys get really carried away with it. And when I get my rattling horns out, um, I'll bang them together. But I don't like to do that much motion. I like to just do do it something similar to this. This is how I would rattle out in the woods. And a tip I picked up from T-Mac a couple years ago 
when those bucks lock their horns, their bases are together. And when they're base, they're not out there like this. They're actually in like that. And those knots right there at the bottom of those horns will rub together. So I'll get those rubbing together as well. And it produces a pretty realistic sound to me. Most of the bucks I've seen will clash and they'll start pushing. And while they're pushing, they're working their heads trying to get leverage and get free to push that buck. So I don't like to, to just, you know, do that. I like to try to make it sound as realistic as possible. And I like to keep my motion down. So if you get that, them knobs rubbing together down at the bottom. And I'll do that for 30 seconds or so. And if I'm in a tree, I've take the and I've got these antlers. I'll scrape the tree with it, and if I've got a branch in front of me, I'll rattle in that branch. Because when bucks fight, man, it's loud. They're pushing down trees. They're they're branch. I mean, the two bucks that are really getting after it will make a a lot of noise and really tear the area up. So I like to add a lot of noise to it, and I like to do it for about 30 seconds, and then I'll wait. And the first place I look is downwind of me. So if the wind's in my face when I'm rattling, I'm looking over my shoulders. Because a lot of big bucks, mature bucks, when they hear calling, when they hear uh, especially bucks fighting, will get downwind of you. So if they're going to be covered in scent, and, and if you can, keep them from coming downwind of you by some natural barrier, that's great. But if you can't do that, the first place I look and while I'm rattling is downwind of me. So Because that's nine times out of ten where the bucks are going to come from. So... Uh, I'll do that for about 30 seconds and I'll wait all 30 seconds or something like that while I'm looking around to see what's coming in and I'll be listening. I'll do it again and then wait and listen and look. Because when a buck comes to that, uh, in my experience, they come hard. And I've had a few that have come in sneaking, but I've had a lot of them that just come in hard and you'll hear them. You'll hear them coming. And I've had some that come in from behind me and just sneak in. That's why when I'm doing it, I'm looking behind me and making sure there's not one sneaking in. Uh, the other thing I've got here is a bag call by uh, Mad. This is the Bang Bag. And this is not a bad call. I like it because it's a little bit port more portable than those horns. And you can see I've, I put it through, uh, I put it through the, the test really good this year. It's not bad. And I like it because I can make that sound like the knobs on this rubbing together with this. See, I don't like, the one thing I don't like about a bag is you get the sound of the bag in there too. Maybe maybe you can't hear it, but I can. I can hear the bag moving around as well. So when I'm trying to do light calling, I can hear the bag as well. But maybe it don't affect the deer, I don't know. But um, My favorite way of using this is actually to either put it against my side, or I like to put it up against a tree and move it around. But I'll take this thing and put it against my side. And use it like that and I like to do that because and it's away and if I need to pick I want to pull it back out so that's how I like to use my rattle bag and I know there's other pro other products out there that there's one that attaches to your leg that sounds real good um, but this bag seems to work real good to me this is what I was using a couple weeks ago when that buck came running in on me I was using this bag up against a tree and and doing some grunting and doing estrus and he came just to charging in. So I like the bag because it's portable and it doesn't sound bad. It seems to be pretty effective. And if you want to, you can really get in there and make it sound. And the cool thing about this one, if I want to, I can actually take some of these out of here. So uh, if I want to take a, a few out to make the sound a little bit different, I can do that. So. That's what I use. Those are some of the tips uh, and tricks that I use for, for the rut around here. They're really effective in the pre-rut stages, early November, late October, early November, wherever it's hitting for you guys uh, when the bucks are chasing. Now, when the buck gets on a doe, you, this stuff, you might as well throw it out because I've had zero luck getting a, a buck off of a doe that's in heat. Uh, I Just zero luck. I mean, I've never been able... I've seen bucks come in and breed a doe and I've done everything I could think of I seen a buck a couple of times come in breed a doe and the doe would take off and trust me they don't breed very long uh, it's something to see uh, really haunt you but <laughs> come in and breed the doe 
And then the doe move out, and he just stays with her. Because the first time that happened to me, I thought, oh, well, he's done breeding her. He'll want to come over here. And I was calling and doing whatever I could think of, and he wouldn't come over there. He stayed with that doe solid. And last weekend, we had one come in on us, and it was like a flash. The doe come through running, the buck come through running, and he went and chased her down. Now, that's a good, a good time, because when the doe's chasing and running away from her, same way with, like, this buck. She don't want to be bred yet. She's not ready to be bred yet. And if she can slip away from him, he'll start back trailing her. Same way this buck did. Same way that buck did. He came looking for her after he lost her. The buck this last weekend lost her, and about 20 minutes later, he came back. Now, the bad thing was he came back just as at a dead run as he went out. And by the time I got him to stop, he was 30 yards broadside in the brush. So... My window of opportunity, I was standing up and I was at full draw on him and going meh, 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 and he wouldn't stop. And then he got in the brush and he stopped and stood there and looked at it. Of course, I'm standing there like an idiot and he busted us. So, um, once they get on a doe, it's it's pretty tricky to, to get them to come off. And the best thing to do is use this stuff and make them think you're a doe. It works really good in a pretty rough stage. So I really appreciate you guys watching this video. I uh, hope I didn't ramble on too much. Hope I made, uh, got, gave you guys some good tips, and hopefully one of you guys will go out and kill a nice monster buck using some of these tricks that I showed you. I know uh, our rifle season opens up this weekend. I'm gonna be carrying all this stuff in my bag to try to be luring a big one in. So if you want to watch the video on this buck, uh, we'll put the title of it right here, so you guys can just search for that on YouTube and you can find it and and check that out. It's a pretty good hunt. It's my first hunt that I actually got on film and it turned out really great. Everything went perfect for me that day. So I um, appreciate you guys watching. You please visit the website ikesoutdoors.com and if you like us on Facebook it just search Ikes Outdoors and it'll take you right to our Facebook page and, and give us a like on there. Appreciate you guys watching.